and welcome to Alphonse Style Eyes. My name is Johanna Nagelsbach. I am the grandniece of Alphonse Style Eyes. 1906, Alphonse Style Eyes has his second year at the School of Arts and Crafts in Nuremberg. 1906 is also a very important year for the German art. Hugo von Tschudi will organize a centennial exhibition of German art in the National Gallery in Berlin with the approval of Emperor William II. How Hugo von Tschudi handled his conflict with the Emperor you will learn in this video. As early as 1897, Hugo von Tschudi, the director of the National Gallery in Berlin, had the idea of putting together a centennial exhibition of German art. He was by no means alone in pursuing this idea. A major art exhibition is, after all, a very labor-intensive affair. There were three committees for the German centennial exhibition. The sponsors, which means art lovers who secured the plan financially, the board of directors who finally selected the works for the exhibition, and the working committee, which went in search of suitable works in the museum's holdings and their archives. The working committee consisted of about 150 members, directors of most modern collections and art lovers. They included, for example, Gustav Pauli, director of the art gallery Bremen, Ludwig Justi, the director of the Frankfurt Städel, Karl Moll, artist and director of the Mietke Gallery in Vienna and patron of Gustav Klimt. The board included Alfred Lichtwag, director of the Hamburg Art Gallery, Hugo von Tschudi, director of the Berlin National Gallery, and Voldemar von Seidlitz, department head for art affairs in the Saxon Ministry. The board was supported by the art writer and gallery owner Julius Meyer Greife. In 1905, Emperor William II gave permission for the exhibition to be held in Berlin's National Gallery and four rooms of the new museum on Museum Island. Now here are mentioned a lot of people who are important for artists. Directors of museums and gallery owners buy art. They make sure that an artist becomes known by selling artworks to museums and galleries. Artists can earn money. Julius Meyer Greife is also a very interesting personality for artists and art lovers. He was one of the founders of the art magazine Pan, the most important organ of Art Nouveau in Germany. Pictures of important artists, such as Max Liebermann, were printed there. Meyer Greife was one of the best experts on French Impressionism and 19th century art. The centennial exhibition of German art owed to him the presentation of hitherto little-known works, especially those of Caspar David Friedrich. Works of German artists from 1775 to 1875 were exhibited in the Centennial Exhibition. Given the very Impressionist-friendly board, this choice of period is very interesting. The term Impressionism did not become established until 1874, allowing works by artists who would later be called Impressionists to be exhibited. By showing works by these artists and their development, but avoiding the word Impressionism, it was possible to avoid conflict with Emperor William II and other opponents of Impressionist art. The catalog texts were written by Meyer Gräfe. It is very exciting that these texts did not deal with the subject of the painting, but contained information about the painting style and coloration. For example, there was talk of reddish intermediate tones or a Tintoretto-like stain effect. This description corresponded to the modern conception of art of Hugo von Tschudi, Alfred Lichtwag and Julius Meyer Gräfe. These were not concerned with the object of painting, but with art for art's sake, the art pur l'art. For example, let's look at this painting by Caspar David Friedrich, which was shown in the Centennial Exhibition. A conventional description could be the image Arctic Sea shows an Arctic landscape. Ice flows are piling up. On the right side you see a sailing ship buried under the ice flows, of which only a part of the stern and the broken mast are visible. You stand in front of it, look at the picture and think, 
Oh, really? Let's be honest. It's not an added value. If you look at the picture, you can see what's on it. At that time, the picture was in the catalog, which, by the way, was entirely in black and white. Under the heading, the ill-fated hope in the eyes. Maya Greife had commented, light brownish and brownish pearly tones with white against a softly bluish background. As additional information he gives, the title in the Dresden exhibition catalog of 1822 is A Failed Ship on Greenland's Coast in the Merry Moon of May. The Art Gallery Hamburg is given as the owner. This description actually leads to a changed perception of the painting. The eye is drawn from the object to the execution and one suddenly notices, for example, the execution of the edges of the ice flow in brown in the foreground. Also, the development of the picture establishes a context that contributes to the understanding. Through this development, landscape painting became much more important and the old hierarchies of art genres lost importance. So history painting in the first place, followed by portrait, genre painting, landscape painting and still life. Capturing momentary moods and plein air painting, which means painting outside in the open air, existed well before 1875 and were given special consideration in the exhibition. In total 2022 paintings and 3331 drawings were exhibited in the exhibition. Who has the head to look at such a flood of artworks? Well, it was a centennial exhibition and the approach of the board was to pay tribute to the unknown and the misunderstood. For some of these artists, such as Caspar David Friedrich, it was the start of popularity. In context, the commentary of the newspaper Generalanzeiger Mannheim is also interesting. This writes that the so-called court art, which means pictures of the opening of the Reichstag by Emperor William II and the congratulation of Moltke on his 19th birthday by the Emperor, follow the reverse secession principle. The form is nothing, the content everything. The audience would have a great interest in this because of the well-known personalities. Well, that's how it is to some extent even today. By the way, I tried hard to find reports about the German Centennial Exhibition in the digital newspapers of the Library of Congress in the United States of America. I did not find a single article. If you find an article, please let me know. For Alfons Zeileis, this centennial exhibition must make clear how different art movements are accepted by the public and what significance form, color and execution have. In any case, the German press reported extensively. Thank you for accompanying Alfons Zeileis in his thoughts about the centennial exhibition of German art in Berlin. Design or art for art's sake? That is the question. By all means for Alphonse Zeileis. How he will decide, you will learn in the next video. I look forward to seeing you then.